Hello, and welcome to a new series of videos where I help you to learn to code for the Sega Genesis, or the Mega Drive if you're not American. In today's episode, I'll show you how to get set up to compile and run code on your Genesis emulator of choice, and then I'll try and explain what the code is doing and things you can mess around with to get different effects and results. Please note, you'll need a PC running Windows for this series. The first thing you'll need to do is look at the links I've put in the description of this video. The first one will link you to gamehut.zip, which is the code I've written to get you started. Download that file and then unzip it into its own directory. You can name the directory anything you like. If that worked, you should have something like this. Next, the second link takes you to a website where you can download a file called asm68k.7z. This is the assembler you'll need and it's packed using a program called 7zip. I'll put a link to 7-Zip as well if you haven't already got it, and you can use that to unpack the zip file from earlier as well if you need to. Once you've got your ASM68K unpacked, copy it into the same directory as the earlier files. Now double click on the file called Build, and you should get a screen like this. Press a key to close that screen, and in the directory now, you should have a couple more files, one of which will be called GameHut.bin. Open your Sega Genesis emulator of choice and load GameHut.bin into it. If all has gone well, you should now have this running on the emulator. If it's not working, let me know in the comments and I'll try and help you out. Assuming you have this on the screen, well done, you've just compiled and run Genesis code. So let's have a look at the code and see what it's doing. You'll need to open the gamehut.s file in some kind of text editor. You should be able to just right click on the file and select edit to open it in Notepad for instance on Windows. Okay, so let's have a look at the code you've just run. Uh, if you look at the start here, you can see that there's an include system.s. This is a lot of system code that I've written in the background. Um, <clears throat> don't worry about that file. Uh, it just includes it. It has a lot of stuff uh, to make all this possible, as it says. Um, it's not something you need to worry about right now. Um, but that's what that, that is at the top. The next chunk here is just me commenting on how the video RAM memory is mapped out. This is to hopefully give you an insight into how the Mega Drive stores graphics and things like that. So at the start of video RAM here, I've just got one blank character. Always useful to have a blank character. So if you're filling a screen with something, you can use the blank character to make it transparent and see through it. From 20 hexadecimal, and hexadecimal you'll be seeing a lot of, 20 is 32 decimal. Um, characters are eight by eight pixel blocks. Each pixel takes half a byte. So that's 32 bytes. So uh, every character takes 32 bytes or 20 hexadecimal. Anyway, this is memory to put characters for any playfield graphics, background, sprites, everything else that will fit in there. At C000 hexadecimal is the character map for playfield one, uh, which is 4096 bytes. I'll talk more about that soon. And then at E000 is character map for playfield two. In here, any variables you want to use in your code, I've got a few in here already. Um, I've got Playfield 1X, Playfield 2X, Playfield 1Y, Playfield 2Y, and a temp screen. I'll explain what that all does in a minute. This chunk here is where you would set up any of the variables or data or anything you need to do uh, before the game runs. So in here, um, you've seen the, the thing run and you can see there's a Playfield scrolling in front of you. What we do first here is set to zero the playfield one's x and y positions so that's just saying start at zero zero next this line here dumps the character graphics uh, for the background into video ram location 20 that we talked about here if i scroll down to the bottom of the file you see here graphics these are the actual graphics to draw the image you can see on your screen um, this first one here just fills a character with color six. This one fills a character with color seven. And then these two are kind of like a diagonal line across between colors six and seven. And if you look at the, uh, the image that we had on the screen, uh, you'll be able to see what, that's the diagonal um, that we're using. Okay, so we go back up here. So that dumps that graphic into video RAM at the location we talked about. So it's four times 32, because that's four characters, they're 32 bytes each, and they go into location 20 up here. So this part here um, takes this memory that we talked about, the temp screen, 4096 bytes, and draws into it the graphic you can see. Um, I've commented it all, so if you want to take the time to read through that, hopefully it makes some sort of sense. But trust me, that makes the pattern. 
that we can see. This then copies that from RAM to video RAM. Again, 4,096 bytes to location C000, um, which is where the character map for Playfield 1 is. So this sets up that pattern we can see on the screen using the characters that we've defined down here and copies it into memory. And then this finally here sets up the palette. The, the Mega Drive has, or Genesis has four palettes in total. We're using palette number one. And uh, these are the colors that we're using down here. Um, so that copies, that command, those commands copy that into the color row. And then here is your main game loop. So what this is going to do is wait for the next frame. Wait VBI means wait for the vertical blanking interrupt, which means wait for a frame. So it v-syncs effectively. And then all it's doing is adding one to play at one X and one to play one Y. So that causes the screen to move diagonally, which is what we see. And then it branches back to the start of main to wait for one frame. So anything you want to do in your code, every frame you would put in there. And then here, is a user, uh, what I've called is user VBI. So when this is waiting for the vertical blank, it's actually calls this code too, which does time critical stuff. So stuff you wanna do off screen, so you don't cause glitches or screen tearing, you do in user VBI. And what this is effectively doing, although it's complicated to look at, um, it's telling the visual display processor, um, the coordinates for the play fields, X position, and then the coordinates for the Y position. So that's telling the hardware. So where we've done here, we've said, hey, let's, uh, let's add numbers to play X and Y to move it. This part here tells the hardware what you've done. So it writes that into the hardware location. And then I've also got a read the joypad thing in here, which will read the joystick inputs. And I'll, uh, we're not using that at the moment. We'll use that in later code. Um, <clears throat> and then this is where all your data goes that we talked about. The graphics we talked about here, um, character graphics, again, there's a lot of text up here explaining what this means. This links into this code here. Please read it in your own time. See if you can make sense of it. Um, but for now, look at the comments. Okay, so that's kind of a very rough overview of the code, but what can we do to play around with it? Well, there's some real simple things you can do. Uh, if you come over here and change this add.w, which is add.word, one to play x to a subtract, dot word and we run that code we again you double click on build to to build it and then press the key to get rid of that screen load it into your emulator we get this which is interesting and then if instead of adding one we add eight and run it we get this so you can see there how you can change the numbers to change the speed uh, and direction of the scroll um, feel free to play around with different numbers uh, on both of those and see see what effects you can get. Um, if we look at the graphics here, let's uh, let's put some Fs in here in the middle and let's run that. And then we get this effect. You can see we've cut kind of a black hole in the middle of, of one of the tiles. I'll just change that back. And then we can change, say, one of these numbers to a six instead of a seven. So we're using a different color. And when we run that, we can see now we've got lines down the middle of our tiles. So again, feel free to mess around with these graphics. Try different things, try different uh, numbers and see what kind of effects you can get going on. Um, the two colors that it's using, there's three colors actually, there's six, seven and F. F is hexadecimal 15. They come from this palette down here. So these are the two colors that are the tile colors. So again, we can change these colors. Let's change this to, so these, these colors are, the first one is the, the blue component, then the green component, and then the red component. So you can see here before, that's the gray, which is all the components. I'm gonna change that to a kind of a mid green. And this was the blue. I'm gonna put some red in there too, to get a kind of a mid magenta. So let's build that and see how that looks rather painful for the eyes I suggest we change that back but you get the idea that you should be able to change these numbers too to get different palettes and then if you use different numbers in here so you could use some of these numbers so this is zero one two three four five 
six and seven which we use but you can you can put in different numbers and use different colors again play around with it mess around see what you can get so hopefully there's a few things in here for you to read up on to play around with to get your own effects like i said mess around with these numbers to change the scroll directions and speeds and these to change the graphics and these to change the colors and hopefully there's enough to fiddle around with and um next time we can look at uh, something new Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments. Please subscribe or like um, and let me know. Uh, hopefully this is something we can make a series of. Until next time, see you.